How's it going there, guitar player? In today's video, we are going to be learning that tune you just heard at the top of this video, Chinkapin Hunting, or as some like to call it, simply Chinkapin. The first question that you're probably asking yourself is, what the heck is a Chinkapin? Well, I've got an answer for you, my friend. I just found out that a Chinkapin is a small relative of the chestnut. Awesome fact for you there. <laughs> But this tune, Chinkapin Hunting, goes all the way back to Hiram Stamper. That's where a lot of people attribute this tune. Hiram Stamper was the father of Art Stamper, the famous old-time fiddle player whose discography has left a huge impact on American old-time and bluegrass music. But I took most of today's version here from the recording made by John Hartford and Bob Carlin on the fun of open discussion. That's a great old-time record of just fiddle and banjo, and in my opinion, it's a great place to go to find pure melodies, or at least the closest thing to pure melodies for any of the fiddle tunes on there. So John Hartford, Bob Carlin, always a great choice if you're going to learn a fiddle tune. All right, now before we go ahead and dive into the lesson, let's listen to a version of Chinkapin Hunting at full speed all the way through, just so we can get an idea of what the tune sounds like, and then I'll go ahead and break it down, okay? <laughs> All right, there you have it, my friend, the tune Chinkapin Hunting. Let's go ahead and, and break this one down a little bit. So the A part to this tune, in my opinion, doesn't present a lot of technical challenges for us here. Most of the melody notes are phrased on the D and the G string, and most of the melody notes happen to be in the second and fourth fret of those strings. <laughs> So I opt to use that fourth fret on the G string, that closed position B note, just because it presents one less string crossing or jump to a new string that we have to make. And it makes it a little easier to play it when this tune gets up to, to tempo. So you notice the only note that we, we use that's on a different string there is that C sharp on the A string. So A part, in my opinion, is pretty easy if you're following along with the tab. Now, let's go ahead and dive into the B part. This is where I think a lot of the technical challenges uh, pop up in the left hand for the guitar. If we look at the first couple measures of the B part, there's something really odd that you'll notice about the fingering that I use. I end up cramming these two fingers into the same fret for uh, all of the notes that are phrased on the second fret of the G and the B string. Now, let me play through this a little bit and you'll see kind of why I do it. At that slow tempo, it's probably pretty apparent why I use those fingers in the second fret. A lot of us might want to put a bar down there, right? But check it out, if you're looking at the end of the second measure of the B part, we've got. Now if I use a bar for that, I have to immediately lift off of that bar and hit an open B note. Now the bar is such a strong thing, we're using a lot of force on our hand to push down two strings at a time, right? So in my opinion, that's a really hard move or technique to come off of to grab an open string after it, which is why I opt to use two fingers on that second fret. So the, the second bar of the B part again. So now with my fingers like that, all I have to do is lift my middle finger to get that next passage. So that's something I wanted to explain and it's honestly a move that doesn't come up too often on the guitar unless you're playing in the key of D, A major, or E major. Any keys where you're gonna get lots of A note triads in open position. So anytime you're kind of playing out of this in open position, 
and need those to be melody notes that you can move in and out of quickly, I would suggest using two fingers instead of barring across because you're going to end up doing a lot of moves like this that are honestly just uncomfortable for your joint and not very quick to get in and out of. So that's my little tip for phrasing the B part melody to chinkapin hunting. One more thing that I'll say, a lot of times people have a hard time with the B part melody here because there are some interesting moves like that one that I had described before. And if that's the case, there are some strategic spots where we can put in pull-offs in order to take some of the burden off of our right hand to help the flow of the tune. So for example, if we're looking at the B part, any of the notes that happen on the high E string, second fret, and then go immediately to an open E string, you can do pull-offs to kind of move through those. Check this out. And we can do a hammer on here. Continue. So you can see those pull-offs at a higher tempo might actually help you execute those eighth note lines a little quicker without stressing your right hand out too much. So if that's something that you notice happen as you increase the tempo, just throw some pull-offs in there. All right, my friend, that should be it for the breakdown on this tune. Let's go ahead and dive into a full tempo rendition of this tune. I'm gonna have the tab up on the screen so you can follow along. But just in case you can't keep up with that full speed version, never fear. Right after, I'm going to pull up a version of this tune at 70 beats per minute so you can follow along nice and slow and make sure you're getting all of those intricate left hand moves on chinkapin hunting down. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the full tempo rendition. <laughs> All right, my friend, there you have it, the full speed rendition of Chinkapin Hunting. Let's go ahead and dive straight into that version at 70 beats per minute. All right, there you have it, my friend, a basic melody to the fiddle tune Chinkapin Hunting. If you really like this tune, I would highly suggest checking out a few different versions of this one so you can add a few more phrases and tools to your toolbox. And speaking of adding an extra phrase to your toolbox, check this out. 
there's actually an alternate phrase that we can add to the A part melody here. So, just in case you want something else to spice up the tune, check this out. You may have noticed this when I was playing through the full speed rendition, but in the second bar of the melody, sometimes John Hartford likes to play this. So in context, it would sound like this. And then he goes on to the next measure as written. So that's a little variation that you can add to the second measure of the A part in case you're feeling it's a little stale. Before we get out of here, if you haven't had a chance, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below and the bell notification button. That way you'll get updates when I upload new lessons here to the channel. Also, if you're interested in an enhanced educational experience for these videos with tabs, play along tracks, and access to live Q&A calls with me so you can ask me any of your questions, go ahead and check out that link below in the description to the Hayes Griffin Guitar Club. All right, my friend, that's it. Thank you so much for sticking around for this video. I hope you get a lot of mileage out of chinkapin hunting or chinkapin, whatever you decide to call it. Don't go anywhere though, okay? We've got more great lessons queued up for you right here. Mm -hmm.